We're back here on the longest map ever. The one where we did the 2TC round 200. This time, I want to do a one tower challenge. And not chimps mode, I just want to see the highest round possible with one tower on this map. Now, I think if I don't allow paragons, it would be a little bit lame at the end. Because we already know, once you get Legend of Night, I just keep it. And then that's my highest round, whatever that ends up being. So I think I want to make an exception for when I get Paragons. I will allow the other two towers drop, but obviously they won't do any damage. They'll be just, they'll just be there for the sake of getting a Paragon. I think for the purposes of this challenge too, I am going to allow it to draw those sub items. I'd say to a certain extent, because I don't want to honestly like drop shooty turrets, even though they're not really a real tower. But I'd say misc items that don't do damage are allowed. So for example, NFT to make money. Paragon totems if I do decide to do that. But yeah, none of the stuff like Genie, Rabbit, or the Shooty Turret. Everything else is fair game. Otherwise, you know, it'd be pretty lame if I just kept Geraldo the entire game. The fun in doing a one tower challenge with like all the towers enabled is, well, the variety. Like what tower do I want to buy at certain points of the game? So now that I got NFT, remember I want to get a Paragon. So what is the next best tower that makes money for cheap? Would it be a boat? Maybe a Merchant Man into a Supply Drop Sniper sounds good. And honestly, I think I want to rush the Supply Drop because ability-based things are going to be insane here. Because, again, if we take a long time to pop stuff, then we can get multiple abilities in a round. Would Marine be better? It would be better, but it's more expensive. So, I mean, the Supply Drop to build into it. Because I don't have $30,000, like, right away. Right now, I'm just going to roll a draw until I get, like, $2,000 and then sell for Merchants. Yeah, because I realized with the Sniper is that, like, it's gonna constantly attack, so it won't- the rounds will go, uh, faster than if we had a Marine and we can choose where to drop it. Anyways, round 18, Merchant Man. Oh, actually, what I could do is I could do a Sneaky. Thank you, Map Creator, for adding obstacles. I can do, like, this. I'll still be able to beat the rounds. Well, I think. <laughs> Barring any regrows. And this allows me to stall longer for more money. Money is important now because, remember, the slider, so... Every extra dollar I get matters in terms of getting a, a super high degree in my Paragon. It actually might have been better to buy Flavor Trades the moment I got it. A couple of rounds of extra income could have helped, but... I'd say negligible, so... Here we go. There's a Supply Drop again. Do the thing where you don't upgrade. So that you take even longer to pop stuff. Oh, that's also a big question. What Paragon am I going to get? I think it's gotta be Boat, right? Boat survives the longest. Alright, next Supply Drop, and there is Late Sniper. And then again, whenever the, the money's there, go for Marine. Again, guys, this map is so long and easy. Even with a tiny sliver, we can beat a Moab doing two damage at a time with this Sniper. And we can get, like, we yeah, we basically maxed out the, what do you call it? The cooldown of the Sniper that round. Maximum crates. Okay, 23,060. Yep, we can go for a Marine now. Yeah, so here's what I can do with the Marine. Look how slow those those Flats are. I can legit just sell it. And wait. And I'll get maximum crates this round. And that'll net me a solid, I think, 10,000 this round. So just keep going until there's only blue balloons and yeah. Lock it in place. So you can use two crates each round, which again equals about $11,000 per round. Now that is stonks. Oh yeah, let that sink in. 11k a round makes more than a 520 farm that costs over 100,000, obviously. You can buff the 520, I suppose. This is the max you can get. But yeah, when you think about it that way, it's quite crazy. For whenever Rigo's coming, we always have to use Marine. Otherwise, uh, this guy can just take it down one damage at a time. Or rather, two damage at a time. Guys, literally boss, like ranked boss levels of farming, but with only one tower. Honestly, the play has to be uh, painfully go through the next 100 rounds or 50 rounds. However long this lasts. While well, maximizing... Uh, each crate, god, that has got to be... Uh, that sounds like the most annoying thing in the world. But that's legitimately uh, what we have to do. Ride the most efficient farming option for uh, as long as possible. If I'm doing the math here, right? I need $2 million to max out the cash lighter. <laughs> We're not even 10% of the way there. And yes, one more thing is, don't forget the pops on the Paragon. It does matter. So maybe at a certain point, it's better to forego... Like, getting cash in exchange for, it, like, dropping down a boat. So that it gets a lot of pops on it. Although, I don't think that's going to be efficient until, like, at least round 80. So, you heard that right? That's another 23 rounds uh, 
of a very fun gameplay. While we're waiting here, um, I do actually wonder whether or not Pyro Lord is actually the best um, boat to go for. Because if you remember, when I did the Chimps run, the P Lord sucks against DDTs. Maybe the Cure Flagship, even though it is pretty weak. Much weaker than Pyro Lord. Would that be better? Ladies and gents, we now officially have the money for the Nave Arc, if we desired. So as it stands, I've come to the conclusion that 87 is the round I want to exchange the money for pops. We get about 65,000 pops on 87, and I'm 99% sure 65k pops is better than 11k money sacrificed, but that's just a guess. Hang on, hang on, I'm doing some very, very specific math here. So you get one power for every 180 pops, okay? I'm doing approximate math for the cash, and I need... I get one power for every 33 cash, which means the ratio should be about, uh, five and a half to one pops and to, to money. So actually, never mind. Not, not 87, not 87. Well, actually, 87 might be worth it because uh, 60k pops as opposed to 11k, that's pretty close to a five and a half ratio. However, you gotta remember around 90 exists, and there's, like, no RB in around 90, which actually means that... 91 might be the round to get it on. 91 has 71k RB, and then it just keeps going higher from there. All right, don't forget to do the big balloon sabotage. So 10% less HP on the balloons coming in equals 10% uh, less pops. So I think uh, I've decided 91 is the is the new round. So it looks like we're going to uh, get the uh, boat with about $600,000 to spare. I will get the money also from 91 before actually selling it. So carry reflection it is. Last um collection. And let's get it. So 502. And now I can finally uh take my uh foot off the pedal a little bit. So again, for this to be better than the P Lord, I would say approximately uh, it should at least get to 110, okay? If not, then uh, that would be un unlucky. How is your action figure doing also? 156k. It'll slowly keep scaling up to 10 million if we somehow make it to, like, 200, but that's not happening. Actually, I, I just realized, would it, would it be a smart idea to get the Bolt Paragon without selling the NFT first? And then waiting for the NFT to be, like, 10 million, and then when I get a new Paragon, the Max Cash Slider will outperform whatever Bolt I currently get, if that makes any sense. And DDT's here? Yep, that, that's, a, that's already way better than P-Lord. Pilo took so long, I basically had to wait for the ability to come up for them to pop. And yes, the global range helps a lot too, because Pyrolord before could only attack like a third of the track. How much damage are we doing even? Like a little over 1k DPS? And yep, I don't even think that was halfway, half the amount of track length. Looking good. Also, I, I should mention, I have not fully decided if I'm going to keep the NFT or not. Basically, I, I remember that maxing a cash lighter gets you degree 60 approximately. So, uh, say for example, the pops plus whatever money sacrifice here gets me uh, well above 60, then there's no need for a second Paragon. I would just go all in on this current Paragon. Oh, also, yeah, I forgot. Uh, yep, boat on last. That gets you attack speed. I'm pretty sure it does apply to the planes too. 6 million pops get around degree 60. I see. We're at 5 million. Okay. There, there might, there, it might just be all in for this, this first Paragon here. This round could be scary. Let's see. I probably should have counted the amount of loops DT's took. Okay, let's check this round. How many bounce backs? One? 14. 15. Oh my god, my, my eyes are so dizzy. Trying to keep track of one DT. 17. 18. 19. 20. 21. They're popping. 22. I'll put it back on first now, actually. 23. I'd say about three quarters of the track. I sure hope that we actually don't get the 16.2 million cap. Otherwise, it would have been a smart idea to keep, you know, the uh, Marine for a little bit longer. I think this round could be death. FDTs that are heavily beefed up. I'm waiting at the death screen. Or not. Well, we're going to do it, guys. No DTs this round equals 16.2. So now every round I pass pass this uh, 16.2 million mark is an extra $10,000 that I could have had towards the degree. But again, I think it'll be marginal. Let's see. Uh, FDATs? Oh. This might be it. First things first, camo priority, I'm pretty sure. Gets me uh, to target DTs. 
Let's see. Difference? Yep. Last uh, camp priority works. We're dead, right? There are just so many DTs. I, I don't believe... I don't believe we can beat it. One last try on last. Last and then switch to first. So we target the ones leaking. I don't know. But we're not even... Yeah, look, look, how, look how much uh, HP is left on all these DTs. It is the end for sure here. So... We have how much money to spare to sacrifice to the Boat Paragon? Well, let's see. 467. So, well, I can just uh, first off sell this. First 373. And how much? 644k. Basically, the max amount of money you can sacrifice is 5x this this dollar amount. So, 644 will only be under a third of the amount. Also, I'm not going to drop other tiers. Other boats for tiers. I think three towers is enough as is. So, let's do it. This Paragon basically, we're basically going to keep for the rest of the game, I think. Aside from a Legend of Night. 78. Now we AFK, guys. <laughs> now we fast forward and see how long this takes. Hint, it'll take quite a while. So just for reference, when I played uh, uh, one Paragon, one Boat on Logs, a Degree 100 got to round 250. This ain't quite Degree 100, but it's pretty close. Honestly, we probably could have gotten Degree 80 by using upgrades, but... These are the rules I'm playing with, so it is what it is. And also, I'm doing the math with, like, if I was super optimal in maximizing money, I could have maybe swapped out the Chinook five rounds later, which would have got me 50k. But 50k worth of cash sacrificing is worth less than one Gervaldo Paragon Totem, for reference, so... No, I don't think it would have mattered. Also, holy crap, we make bank. It's only been 20 rounds and we already got up to 160k again. Oh, and if I do, like, make enough money somehow here... I could probably afford to buy myself the Bolt Paragon itself multiple times. Because I'm pretty sure it, when you rebuy them, like, you, you you get the two hooks reset each round. So you could hook in an extra bad if you if you need to. But of course, you know, the Legend Knight takes priority. Let's see how long it takes to be an F-Bad for science reasons. One loop, basically one and a half loops out of the 16.5 allotted on this map. I can now start to feel the bads pushing on us. The bads have now made it two loops out of 16. So with the round, the finishing of this round, we have now officially passed our degree 100 Paragon test. Sitting on a fancy 1.3 billion pops and 367k made. Which means the remaining 600k that we have right now, we got because of just popping natural balloons. So I guess keep that as, as a reference point. You make $600,000 from 138 to 252. I have noticed the last couple rounds, guys. It's gone further and further. Let's do another count this round. So one loop. Four, uh, five. Five and a half. So th they're now approximately one third of the way. So it's, again, it's important to mention that laking, the ramping is additive, not multiplicative. However, it does spike at certain moments. So for example, like 250 and above, the ramping additively scales faster, scales higher. Which means you generally notice a bump in difficulty, like, in like the five rounds past 250. But after that... You know, you start to feel less so. You know, I just realized that the obstacles kind of hurt the boat a little bit too. The trees here block the line of sight for it attacking the f bad So, guys, that, 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 that confirms it. We gotta retry all over again with a new map. Half kidding. It didn't matter with the Kira flagship because almost all the power went in the planes. But for this one, definitely. Alright, it is here. The triple sentry mark. So after this round, the ramping goes up even more. Additively, it goes up another 50%. I'm counted loops, and it's still only halfway. Well, for this bat, actually. Nine loops. Ten loops. Almost 11 loops. If I had to say, maybe 20 more rounds we can get out of this. Oh, this round, I'm definitely counting. There's so many F-Bats I can't hook in. So, one loop. Nine. Ten. Oh. New furthest stud. Uh, part of the track 11 12 13 so past three quarters of our guys if you got that zoom g that that's actually uh wait that's like 15 loops that was close i wouldn't be surprised if we lost this round by the way i'm not gonna count i'm tired of counting holy crap that last f bat has no damage on it because it's all the planes are starting strong which means it only really focuses one f bat at a time it might be a jover let's see Waiting. Nope. My prediction is once again going to be proven wrong, but it, it's got to be nearing the end soon. We are dead for sure, right? The aces, like, explosions can't 
damage a second bad because they're so damn spaced. I will just be shocked if this does not exit. Because I swear it is... It, it is due. But nope. That's UMG there. Still taking another loop. Why is it, Why are we not hooking it in? Is there... I'm sure the cooldown for hooking insta-killing stuff is already through. But it's not... It's immune to be hooked, being hooked in. And looks like I miscounted. Because that UMG took like four loops. I was never aware of the fact that there's a limited amount of hooks for the normal hook in. I mean for the ability, I know there's two, but... No, you see, there, there are, the boat is still constantly hooking in, as you see there. The green lions. Okay, if this round does kill me, I just don't know what's going on. Because I am counting 11 loops so far in the last F-Bad. 12. 13. 14. Yup. This has to do it. 15 loops? 16? Uh, one more, I guess. 17. 18, what? I must be miscounting things, because uh, I'm not dead yet. What? I swear I counted 20 loops. I literally did counting in my chimps run, and DT's exited after uh, 16 and a half loops. So I have no idea what kind of black magic sorcery that the uh, Navark added to make us not die. What if there is some... It would be funny if it was a glitch that somehow, if the bad popped, like the ZMG spawns would go to another lane. Like the start of the track again. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. It might be bugged if we don't die this round. Like, come on. No way it beats, like, 10 F-Bats this round. The bats have reached their loop limit. Right? Yay, finally! Holy crap. I was waiting so long for that. 328. So now the one thing I wanted to try was I wanted to see if I can possibly get it to grade 80. Holy crap, the game is so laggy. It's doubtful, but I'll try simply by doing two Paragon Totems. I'll wait for two Bopo bo Hookins. I wait for an FZMG. Not these ZMGs. I'm waiting for an F. If there is FZMG this round. Are there no FZMGs this round? Oh, come on. That's unlucky. Because as you see... Yeah, I don't know. If there's no FZMGs, I have to just hook in a ZMG then. So only 1.2 million. And then... that I, I just upgrade now because... FDTs don't give you much. So... Now we sacrifice 1.5 million, but... It's not gonna matter. Look how much lower it is, guys. 62. The pops are really that important. So, I can squeeze precisely one more round out of this, simply by doing Legend Knight at the end, okay? So, strategy here. Leave these two F-Bads, okay? So, let me wait for the last two F-Bads to remain, and then I can very easily just, uh, wait. This, and Legend of the Knight. It's highly doubtful. We'll see if you can beat 329 with somehow being able to cycle the, you know, Navark. But I am not seeing it at this point. There we go. There's Portal. Let's just try a degree one Navark. Just for the instant hook in. Yeah, I don't think there's any chance. Last try. The only thing I can do here is, uh, use some money sacrificing. Yeah, sc screw it. Max sacrifice. For the funsies. 57. GG. It's over, everybody. Actually, one thing I could try is Legend of, Night of the Nighting again. If the three-minute cooldown is up. I do think these... All the all the bads would exit, I think, in the 12 seconds that the portal is up, or however long it lasts. Just seeing if I can squeeze one more round out of this, you know? But yes, this made it so much further than I expected. I thought 300 was going to happen, but not much further than that. But 329, damn. That is crazy. Yep, they do exit, so I can survive another round. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't have sacrificed... Oh, I shouldn't have sacrificed that much money to the Navark GG. Because maybe I should have sacrificed just enough to beat everything that's not a bad. So maybe a degree 20 and 40 would have done it. Now I can't buy it again. So it's it's truly the end now, 3, th 3.30. If I played a bit more optimally, maybe a couple more rounds out of it. But yeah, this run already took like two and a half hours. So I'm good. 330.